It wasn't over. It still isn't over. Hello everyone, I'm Sarah from Everyday Starlet. Welcome to my channel. I make videos to inspire you to be the star of your own life. I'm continuing my Masculine Feminine Energies Film Breakdown series with the highly, highly requested classic, The Notebook. If you're not familiar with what I mean by Masculine and Feminine Energies, I talk about this in most of my videos, but a brief summary. Masculine and Feminine Energies are energies that live within all of us. We all contain both energies. We all have a core energy that's the one we're most ourselves in. That energy often links up with our gender. It doesn't have to, but it very often does. We can be in wounded or healed versions of either of these energies. And these energies all contain archetypes, and we all contain all of the archetypes that we can embody anytime we need to. And in order to have sexual polarity in a relationship, you need one partner to be in the masculine energy and one partner to be in the feminine energy. Because opposite energies attract sexually and same energies repel sexually. So I have to be honest, I have been getting requests to do a breakdown of the notebook ever since I started doing these breakdowns. And there's a few reasons why I put off doing this breakdown. For one, I feel like there are a lot of creators and a lot of coaches and things who use clips from this movie to do, you know, similar type breakdowns and things like that. I think I do more in-depth breakdowns than most people do as far as the masculine and the feminine. But I felt like there were so many other people doing scene breakdowns from this movie to demonstrate things like polarity and stuff. I didn't really want to step on anybody's toes. So many people were requesting that I do my version of it, so I figure, you know, everybody puts their own individual spin on it, so I figured, why not? I'll just do the breakdown. The second reason I put it off is because I have a confession to make. I had never seen The Notebook. <laughs> I actually did not watch it until yesterday so I could film this breakdown. I mean, I knew the storyline, so there weren't really a lot of surprises, and I've seen so many scenes from it that like, I kinda knew what was gonna happen in the movie. But to be honest, I think when it came out originally, like it was so overhyped, and people made such a big deal about it, and it's been so, I don't know, hyped up as this like the ultimate romantic movie. I think I avoided watching it out of plain stubbornness, <laughs> and the fact that like when movies get hyped up that much, I kind of usually end up finding them to be a letdown. So I just put it off, and plus a lot of people were saying that it was a real tearjerker, that it was just so emotional, and I was like, oh, I like to wear eye makeup, I didn't really want to cry. If you haven't seen this movie yet, or if you decide to rewatch it after you watch this video, don't wear eye makeup when you watch it. I made that mistake yesterday and I really regretted it. But anyway, so for those of you that don't know, this movie follows Allie and Noah, played by Rachel McAdams and Ryan Gosling, who were a real life couple when they filmed this, or... I actually don't remember the exact timeline of it, if they met on the set and then they started dating while they were doing this, or if like they were dating before, or if they started dating after. I don't remember the exact timeline of their relationship, but they were like a hot and heavy couple at the time, which just added to the hype of the whole movie. And it is this really sweet story. You, it's, it's basically Noah as an elderly man who is reading the story of their romance to Allie while she's elderly and going through the stages of dementia and he's basically like retelling her the story of how they met and how they got together and it has a lot of twists and turns along the way and you kind of find that out throughout the movie that like the people in the story are the elderly people who are telling the story which honestly I kind of knew <laughs> and I feel like I kind of could have predicted it even if I didn't know. It was, it was pretty obvious. So I'm not going to focus so much on the elderly couple although I will say like everyone kept talking about how sad the ending was. And spoiler alert if you haven't seen it, I won't actually give away the actual ending, but I was very content with the ending. I really thought it was a very beautiful way to end the story. You know, they're holding hands and I just, well, yes, it is sad. I did think I was like, yep, that's kind of how you want to think of this couple as, you know, completing their life together. I probably just gave it away, but <laughs> anyway, I won't focus quite so much on them, but I did think it was beautiful, the fact that that this man was so dedicated to being there for the love of his life throughout her life. He was doing anything. He would overcome any obstacle just to be there for her and be there with her and insisted on being there for her through everything, even when she was completely rejecting him because she didn't know who he was. I mean, that that's true love and that is true masculine devotion and masculine loyalty and masculine dedication right there i just want to say and that commitment that loyalty that love applaud it all the way i think we need more of that in our world today i mentioned this in my dirty dancing breakdown but i do think that you know this movie even though this was well after dirty dancing these movies all kind of have a similar theme to them where the the wealthy guy or the guy who's stable who has his life together is I mean, in the, in the notebook, he's not a bad guy at all. He's actually a very nice guy. He's got a lot of great qualities to him. Um, in other movies, it, it's kind of like the wealthy guy is a bad guy. So he's either boring or he's a bad guy. And 
the poor guy who doesn't really have much to offer a woman is like he's the the loving guy he's the nice guy he's the wonderful man and I'm not saying that that scenario can't happen there are of course men who are very successful and stable who are complete jerks and there are guys who are you know poor and broken and have a lot to offer someone in, in other ways through love and things like that but it doesn't always happen that way. But in Hollywood, it seems to always happen that way. In a sense of like, let's set women up to think that if they choose the guy with stability, the guy with a purpose and direction in his life, a guy who actually has like his life together, that she's automatically gonna have this boring, miserable life and kind of idealize the kind of guy from the wrong side of the street, so to speak, as always being this loving, wonderful guy. And I can speak from my own experience where I can tell you that the guy from the wrong side of the streets is not always the best option. He's not always, he's not a Noah all the time. He's not always this loving man who really wants to do things for you. Sometimes he's just as much of a jerk as the guy who's successful and stable. But in Hollywood, it always seems to work out this way, right? So I just kind of want to make a note of that, that I am going to discuss the energies in this movie, but I also don't want to perpetuate this idea that like just because a man is, you know, comes from money or has his life together or whatever, that he's always going to either be a bad guy or in this movie, kind of a little boring, and, and kind of glamorize the idea that the guy who's from the wrong side of the streets is always gonna like get his life together and, and win the woman and, and love her more. It's not a guarantee that way. In, in real life, nothing is a guarantee and I think it's really important for women to really tune into what they really want out of life and actually, I think ideally find a partner who you have that like the love and the sexual polarity but also a man who has the stability and will actually provide for you and be a protector for you and, and things like that. I think it's really important to tune into that and not get into this idea of like, I mean, Noah's a project, let's be serious. And he he does do a lot of work on himself throughout the movie and does end up being an amazing guy, but he is a project. You know, I, I think sometimes we, as women, get programmed into thinking that the guy who's the project is always the right answer. And sometimes that project is not going to turn out the way that we want it to. And sometimes as women, we can we can be the inspiration for men to step up and be greater and sometimes men no matter how much feminine inspiration you bring to him are just not going to step up to the plate and it's really important as a woman to really be able to tell the difference between a man who who wants to be the best version of himself and that you can actually inspire him to be greater and a man who's just not gonna step up no matter what he does or no matter what woman he's with. That's just my little side note rant, but let's get into the movie. So Noah first sees Allie, they're at this carnival, they're both 17, so they're young, they're kind of in that like, the world is at my fingertips, young love kind of a, a phase in their life. And Noah sees Allie and kind of gets very intoxicated with her right away. She's she's glowing, she's, she's smiling, she's fun, she's the like, a epitome of like this fun feminine radiance and Noah is just so drawn to her but Noah hasn't really stepped into the fullness of his masculine energy at that point so he kind of pursues Allie he's very direct which is really amazing he's got a lot of he's got a lot of potential as far as masculine qualities go but he hasn't really stepped into the fullness of his masculine he's still very erratic and unstable and Allie can sense that um, in fact when he actually like jumps on the ferris wheel and is like hanging from the ferris wheel to convince Allie to go out with him and she's pushing him away not literally pushing him away she would kill him but she's basically rejecting him over and over and over again he keeps getting more and more like he takes his hand off it's this whole like instability thing she's pushing him away because yes Yes, this is a grand gesture, it's a grand romantic gesture. However, it's very unstable. He's being very unsafe, he's being very dangerous. And that energy is not trustable. It can be exciting, it can be exhilarating, but it's not trustable. Allie senses that. She senses that this guy is just too erratic and too unstable. She's not feeling the groundedness of his stability and it's, it's very off-putting for her. Noah keeps pursuing her, which again is very masculine. He is being the pursuer. He is being very direct. He knows what he wants and he's going to get it. He is is actively taking the lead. That, that's that masculine like hunter energy. He gets Allie to go out on a date with him and they kind of have a good time. They're having some fun. And you find out that Allie's life is actually very structured. She has everything in her life set up. She's, you know, comes from a family of tons of money and she's got everything all set up, all structured. She always talks about we as if like her parents have everything figured out for her. She doesn't get to make her own decisions. She's basically, uh, living this structured life is very similar to Audrey Hepburn's character in Roman Holiday. It's this very structured life where her femininity, her feminine energy is not allowed to flow. But when she's with Noah, because he's more fun and playful, 
she can kind of let a little bit of that feminine energy out. It's like her way of escaping things. Because that rigid structure that she's so used to is very suppressing. The feminine needs to be able to flow. She needs freedom. She needs movement. And if you have a life that's that structured, it's probably why she enjoys herself so much when she does get those moments of freedom is because it's finally her letting her feminine energy come out. And then they go for a walk after their first movie date and they're walking and Noah convinces her to lay down in the street to look at the street lights. And it's interesting how she finally agrees to lie down with him. She's very like hesitant at first because this is totally out of her comfort zone. It's scary. She asks what happens if a car comes and he's like, we die. And she kind of like panics and he's just like, you just have to trust. Again, I talked about this in my Dirty Dancing breakdown about the masculine really wants the feminine's trust. It's really important for him now. The masculine needs to be trustable in order for that to happen. And Noah is starting to feel more grounded. I mean, they're literally grounding, lying on the street. I mean, it's literally like they're both grounded together. And that's kind of the moment when Allie kind of loosens up and she tells him that, you know, for fun she likes to paint. And it's kind of almost like painting for her is is this thing that is not really part of her schedule. It's this, this other activity activity that she just really enjoys doing and she wants to do but it's not really part of her structured life so like that's the moment that she gets to kind of freely express herself which is a real need for the feminine if the feminine doesn't find some kind of creative expression in some way shape or form you know painting dancing any kind of movement or what any kind of creative energy the feminine is going to feel very suppressed and she starts talking about how she feels when she paints and they kind of both lose track of what's going on and don't hear the car coming and then like just get out of the way of the car like at the very last minute and it's interesting because Noah panics because he realizes that he has not failed because they got out of the way but has started to fail as her protector he's feeling really shook up like oh my god I didn't protect her I got in the zone, I fell into her trance of her talking about essentially her feminine flow. He kind of panics in that moment and is asking her if she's okay and she just starts laughing and it's like this exhilaration for her because she's finally let go of a lot of her structure. It's like she finally doesn't have to have this masculine structure in her life anymore. She, she kind of felt his grounded nature and he's kind of stepping a little bit more into his protector energy and she's feeling safer around him and that's where she kind of lets go and she just like laughs hysterically which is, is really just a beautiful thing to see. It's like you're witnessing them shift into their natural core energies like as they're together. It's like he's becoming more masculine in her presence and she's becoming more feminine in his. Naturally, they're not forcing it. It's just that he's feeling this very grounded sense of like wanting to protect her and she's feeling this sense of him becoming more trustable and her being able to really kind of let go and, and let loose and let her guard down and like actually be more be more in flow. So they're spending their summer together and you know it's it's young love. It's young love, it's beautiful. They're just having fun and they're flowing together. They're always going to the water and there's a theme of birds throughout this which is sort of like this bird in flight which probably has to do with you know flying away essentially you know like like in an angelic sense i would say which is probably a a little bit of a teaser for like how the movie ends you know she's like i'm gonna reincarnate as a bird i'm gonna be a bird like you have to t say i'm a bird say i'm a bird and like it's kind of like like teasing him she's so playful and that moment actually when she's in the water and she's telling him that she you know she's a bird and she wants him to say she's a bird and and everything he is so present with her it's, it's such a great masculine feminine example of like she is she's literally in water which water is very feminine that flow of the water the ocean is representative of the feminine she's literally talking about about flying and and she's in the water it's kind of like all the elements all together he is so grounded and present with her it's like he is witnessing her being in that flow and she has all this like life force energy within her and he is just so magnetized to her and is just so his focus and his presence is solely on her because she is the most intoxicating thing in the world. I mean, it's this masculine feminine polarity right there. It's just so beautiful to watch. Of course, she's also got a really serious temper and they kind of both do, but he is always so good at keeping his temper grounded, at keeping his temper controlled. And throughout the film, it's gonna be kind of a controversial thing, but she hits him a lot in the film. Uh, she slaps him. A lot when she gets angry she gets very fiery I mean, she's a fiery redhead you know what I mean so she's a lot of fiery energy reminds me a lot of my breakdown of the quiet man which is probably one of my favorite film breakdowns that I've done and I'm not advocating physical violence I'm not 
I do think that some of this political correctness that we have in the world and some of this idea of like men and women have to be the same, we've lost some of this because we shame women when they get that fiery energy and they get that passionate. If you notice, every time that Allie hits Noah, his response is so grounded in his masculine. Like the first time you see her hit him, he's, he's just stable. He's like a tree. It's very similar to like John Wayne in The Quiet Man. He is a tree. She can hit him. And it's, she wants to feel his strength. I'm not advocating this, but it is, it is a test of his strength. It is, I want to see if I can knock you down because if she can't knock him down, she knows he's grounded in his stability. And that's, it's, it's, a, it's feminine testing is really what it is. And I have a lot of videos about feminine testing. She also hits him when they have their big breakup at the end of the summer. And she's really going at him and it's interesting because she's going at him and his response is to start hitting himself it's like it's playful it's like this moment of acknowledging like yeah you're hitting me okay guess what i'm gonna start hitting myself now like it it, it like breaks the moment you know breaks the tension and it creates that sexual polarity it's a grounded response it's like oh you're gonna hit me great i'm gonna hit myself he's not hitting her back because that's not true masculine energy he doesn't want to hurt her she's flowing and he is basically like okay great in the same way that she kind of goes crazy after her family tells him that she's going to sarah lawrence and she's going to be leaving for new york and they have this moment where she's basically you know in her head she's spinning she's like please don't hate me and she's going crazy and he like grabs her face and holds it like a fish i know there's a lot of men out there who are going to be like you can't do that to women nowadays whatever it's open-hearted it's loving it's playful he's opening her up it's how the masculine can use humor in order to wake everybody up in the moment it shows a lack of ego it shows a lack of like yes you're hitting me you're coming at me but like i can handle it whatever you're throwing at me i can handle and i know there's a lot of men who are going to argue why should they have to do that but if you want to be the masculine in the relationship that's how it works you have to be able to handle the feminine storm and ali has a lot of feminine storms in fact there's a lot of iconic storms in this film um that come up as far as like the connection to nature and things like that and you know, Ali is a cyclical being. She's a feminine being. She's very fiery. She's very watery. She's she's got all the elements running through her, and and she is like a force of nature. The fact that Noah is grounded and can contain her. Containment is a tricky word, actually. I believe I mentioned this in my Star Wars breakdown. Containment for the feminine is not about control. It's not about the masculine controlling the feminine. It is about him being able to handle her storm she can let free in the storm because he's got the container so he's going to keep her he's going to keep her protected in in her feminine storm so again she gets in her emotions and he like grabs her face it, it's like he's not trying to hurt her he's trying to wake her up he's trying to be like hey like let, let me do this ridiculous thing this funny thing to like get you out of your head and i've said this before you know the masculine is like the tree and the feminine is like the wind and the storm around the tree and the masculine stays rooted and grounded and does not waver whereas the feminine needs to know that the masculine is rooted enough in the ground so that she can she can have her storm going around him and he's not gonna waver he can he can bend and twist and he can move with the storm but he's not going to fall over. He's not going to break because because he's got this because he's so grounded. That's what the feminine wants. Heard a lot of men argue with me that maybe that's not what women should want, but there's a lot of things that you know women think that men shouldn't want that they do. So, so guys, if you want to know what women want, that's what we want. We want you to be able to withhold our storm, you know? And, and if you can't, you got to find a way to do it. But that's that's what Noah is. He's stepping into his very grounded masculine energy. Before their breakup, Noah actually takes Allie to this like abandoned home that he confesses to her. He's been fantasizing about buying and fixing up. It reminds me a little bit of the It's a Wonderful Life breakdown, although it was a little bit in reverse where it was Mary that wanted to, uh, you know, redo the home. But Noah had this vision of his house. And Noah is talking about you know, redoing the home. He's talking about the floors, the walls, the plumbing, the electricity. Like he's talking about the structure of the house and the masculine is very much the structure. And it's interesting because then Allie's like, well, what about me? Don't I get a say in this? And he's like, do you want to say in this? Like she's envisioning herself in this home and she starts going into the detail of like that she wants the house to be white, that she wants to wrap around porch, she wants them to have tea together. She's going into the mindset of like the details of the home. He's thinking about the masculine structure of building a house. 
she's thinking about the feminine aspect of making it into a home. That's very much masculine feminine dynamics as far as the masculine is the structure and the feminine is like the details. And he is creating this house for them. He kind of obviously wants it to be with her, but he's not saying it's with her. This has just always been his dream. And she's now envisioning what their life could be like if they made it into a home. And they decide to try to sleep together that first night while they're there in that house. And it's interesting because, you know, they both want it. They're both like undressing each other and they're fully witnessing each other. They're fully seeing each other being very vulnerable. And then they come together and Allie panics. She freaks out. She's like, all right, I know I wanted to do this, but you need to like, she is so in her head. This is the epitome of the feminine when she gets in her head. Very often it happens during like sexual situations where the feminine is, is nervous or is having trouble dropping into her body. It's very uncharted territory and she's not necessarily as comfortable with the fact that Noah is now very quiet. He's very still and she's like, why aren't you talking? Why aren't you this? Because Noah's usually a little bit more talkative, but in that moment where they have this sexual polarity and they're coming together, it's not that uncommon for the masculine to want quiet, to want stillness, to want presence, to want to witness her. The feminine wants to be in flow, but Ali's not quite comfortable yet being in that feminine flow. She's not comfortable being in her body yet. It's her, obviously her first sexual experience, so she is doesn't really know what to do with herself, doesn't really know what to do with her body. She's really nervous and you know, Noah is kind of trying to calm her down. They're trying to they're trying to come together, but they're having this moment of a little bit of a disconnection, I think, because Allie's really nervous. And Noah's getting frustrated because he's very he's very in his masculine, like, okay let's take charge and let's do this and she's kind of fighting him and he doesn't really know how to handle her fighting him off he doesn't want to hurt her he wants to protect her he wants to love her he doesn't necessarily have that i mean they're still 17 they're kids like they he doesn't really have that ability at this point to to really know what she needs in that moment in order to get out of her head and into her body because he's probably nervous too. So they have a difficult time coming together. Then of course they get interrupted by Finn and find out that Allie's parents have been looking for her and it's all this drama going on and which leads into Allie's parents basically telling Allie that Noah isn't good enough for her and Noah kind of essentially wants to walk away. And that is a theme where as much as Noah wants to be with Allie, if not being with her is really going to make her happier, he wants her to be happier. That very often can happen with the masculine. When the masculine has not found his passion and purpose, which Allie has a lot more direction. She's a lot more opportunity. She's a lot more of her life set up. Noah doesn't really know what he's doing at this point. Like he, he has a job, he's working, but he doesn't really know what his future's gonna look like. He doesn't necessarily have a set direction with his life. He's just kind of working a labor job just to kind of, you know, get by and help his dad get by. So he doesn't necessarily have his life set out. And when the masculine doesn't feel like he has more structure, more direction, more purpose than the feminine, he's going to feel not good enough. I mean, Allie is not telling him he's not good enough. She's not, she's not making him feel like he's not good enough, but he doesn't believe that he's good enough. So if the masculine doesn't feel like he is quote unquote good enough, I'm using that term because that's what he's thinking. I'm, I don't like getting into that too good for somebody, not good enough for somebody kind of attitude. But in his mind, if he doesn't feel like he is living up to the level of what his feminine partner deserves, he will often walk away. Not because he doesn't love her, but because he truly wants her to be with somebody who has more direction and purpose than him. Noah kind of does that. He hesitates. He's not totally clear in that communication. He's kind of getting into this, well, we'll just see how it goes. We'll see where it goes. He's getting into that stability of like, well, you know, we'll just see how things go. He's get, he's becoming that like sort of like flow boy um, of like, let's go with the flow and see what happens. Allie's not feeling his strength in that moment. She She's not feeling his strength as masculine direction. So she goes into her feminine storm. That's when she really starts to like, hit him and then he starts hitting himself which is you know like his his reaction to that like it's his way of like all right i'm just gonna get this out of my system because he's not gonna hit her because he's not gonna hurt her he wants to protect her no matter what she does he still loves her and wants to protect her and keep her safe she wants to feel his strength that's why she's doing it like he's he's wavering he's not that rock he's not that 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 grounded rooted tree anymore so she's like trying to knock him down because she wants 
to feel his strength. And she is in this storm of emotions. She's really letting go of this storm and he has to walk away. It's evident of what I mentioned in several other videos, whereas the feminine is either opening or closing. The masculine is either moving closer or further away. So this is a really great example of that where the feminine is like, okay, I'm gonna shut down and I'm gonna be angry with you, but I'm not going anywhere. Like you're not, we're not, we're not breaking up. Like this isn't over. And the masculine is like, I need to leave the situation. He still loves her, but he's realizing that this is not a good situation and he leaves. So the feminine, if something goes wrong, the feminine will usually stay but shut down, whereas the masculine will sometimes be too quick to leave. Now, whether or not that was the right decision in this moment is debatable, but in this situation, the masculine will usually be too quick to leave and run away, whereas the feminine will usually stay longer but but really shut down. And this breakup is a really great example of that. So time goes by, Noah's writing to Allie. He writes to her every day for a year. She doesn't get the letters because her mother hides them because her mother really doesn't want them together. And, you know, they both kind of decide they have to move on. And Noah actually goes through a lot of changes in his life. He goes off to war. He loses his best friend in war. He ends up basically coming home to his father, basically giving him the money so he can buy his dream home, which is interesting how, you know, both Allie and Noah both have parents who are helping them out, even though Noah's father doesn't really have as much to give him, but he does still have that family support to help him with that, that, that really great role model in his father, because his father really does seem like a really grounded, uh, stable, like good man. Noah ends up getting to build his dream home. He builds it and it's kind of one of those like, like if, if I build it, she will come. Like he's really convinced if he builds this dream home that it will bring her back to him because he doesn't really ever forget her. He does date this other woman and it's really interesting like in one scene when they're in bed together. I mean, they're in bed together, they've just had sex and it's like she, she knows, like the feminine knows when the masculine is not present. He's there with her, but she mentions to that, like she knows when a man is thinking of somebody else. Like he is, his mind is always with Allie, even though he hasn't seen her in years, like that's where his mind is. Like he's with this other person, but he's not present with her. He rarely ever really even looks at her very much. It's like he, his presence is with Allie. When he looks at Allie, he's fully present with her. Whereas when he looks at other women, he may like them, he may be attracted to them, but he's not fully present with them because they're not the most attractive feminine energy that he's really experienced. So that's what he's seeking is, he's seeking Allie's feminine flow. He's seeking Allie's feminine storm, her feminine emotions, all those things that frustrate him and attract him. Like he's seeking that. He's not getting that sexual polarity from anybody else. So Allie goes off to college, she studies, she actually becomes a volunteer nurse for the military. She meets Lon, played by a very dashing James Marsden, and, and Lon is charming. He's incredibly charming, he's fun, he's playful. He comes from a great family, he's got a passion and purpose, he has a job, he's a lot of stability, he's a lot of focus. He's an all-around great catch. I mean, and I think that sometimes these movies do these things to kind of paint this guy as being like the ultimate guy to kind of be like, hey, she's willing to give up like the ultimate guy for this other man that she loves because she loves him so much. Like Lon was an all around good guy. He seemed stable. He seemed um, like a fun guy, a little bit of an ego. Like he knew he had a lot going for him, but it wasn't really, it wasn't over the top or anything like that. It was just, he was painted as being the safe option. You don't know if he really would have been able to handle the fullness of Allie's emotions because they didn't really show a lot of their relationship. But you kind of get the impression that he probably wouldn't have been able to handle all of Allie's emotions. Allie was very put together with him. And even when she was going to confront him about whether or not she was going to marry him towards the end of the movie, she had to put herself together to see him. Kind of get the impression that she wasn't really able to be herself. She does confront him at one point and says that she realizes she hasn't been painting anymore and she wants to get back into painting. And Lon's like, great. Like, he's not trying to suppress her, but you kind of get the impression that Allie doesn't really feel comfortable with Lon being her full self. Like, he's not the man that she can really let her guard down with. He's not the man that she can let the fullness of her emotions, let the fullness of her 
her feminine storm flow. It's like he's too, he's too put together. He's too perfect in a sense. He might've been able to handle her. He didn't come across like somebody who was unstable or ungrounded. So you kind of wonder if Allie had been willing to let her guard down and be her full self with him, if he would have been able to handle it. That's obviously not the point of the movie and not where the movie was going. But I do think that that's an important lesson to remember is that, I mean, as women, we're intuitive. So we can kind of sense when someone is going to be able to handle our full feminine storm and when somebody is not. That said, if you are with a man and you're unsure or you're holding back, if you don't fully let yourself show, if you don't let yourself be seen, if you don't fully let your feminine emotions, your feminine flow, your the fullness of your feminine and all its different flavors and all its 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 messiness and its beauty, it's darkness and it's light. Like if you don't let that show to a man, you're never really going to know if he can handle that. So I think it's really important to note that Allie was really hesitant with Lon, I think, because she wasn't feeling like she could fully, just fully be herself in all her different flavors with him. She might have been able to. Who knows? I mean, obviously she really wanted to be with somebody else, but in reality, I think it's 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 just a lesson for women to know that if you're if you're holding back from a man, you can't say that he's not fully accepting who you are because you're not showing him fully who you are. So if you show a man fully who you are and he can't handle it, great. Bye-bye. Like <laughs> it's done. But if you don't show him, you're never really going to know if he can handle it. So you're either going to walk away from somebody who may have been able to handle everything. He may have loved everything about you, but you didn't give him a chance to. Or you might stay in a situation that isn't right for you and be suppressing who you really are because you're afraid of losing that person. And I think those two scenarios are really common today when it comes to relationships. And I, I really encourage women to just let your true self show, like really learn to love and accept yourself for who you are and show that part of yourself to people so that you can attract the people into your life who are right for you. <laughs> and the ones that get scared away just aren't meant to be in your life. So Allie goes back and finds Noah, finds him at his home. He's created this home that is really the home that he created for the both of them. And, you know, they kind of have these sort of nice moments of pleasantries with each other. And then the storm comes. And the storm comes, and that's when they kind of release. It's kind of like Allie is trying to be like, okay, yes, we can be friends. I'm engaged, like this and that and everything. And then, you know, they're out on the boat, and Noah has shown her this, like, these birds that they're surrounded by because obviously she's got this connection to birds and you know they're they're being very pleasant to each other it starts to rain and that's the feminine storm and that's it, you know women are connected to nature right it's <laughs> we're very cyclical that's the feminine storm and that's when she finally is just like you know why didn't you write me why didn't I hear from you like you know I waited for you and it wasn't over and I didn't want it to be over and that's when Noah confesses like the iconic line where he's like I wrote you every day for a year it, it's not over it was never over it's not over you know this whole kind of thing and whatever and they come together and they have this like passionate love making it's not as sweet as it was going to be the first time Time, right like the first time it was like he was very like am I hurting you I don't want to hurt you she's in her head she's freaked out like it's and they're young right they're young and they were they were having this very loving sweet love making and it just kind of couldn't come together now they're adults they're adults and they've had this they've been through a lot they've they've she stepped into her feminine energy she's releasing this feminine storm and and everything and he's you know, he stepped into his masculine energy and now they're coming together and it's like fireworks. It's this passion and they have this passion together because their sexual polarity is so heightened because of everything they've been through because they've stepped into their core energies. They're grown-ups now. They're having this grown-up adult, adult connection now that when they were kids they had this loving connection that was building sexual polarity but they hadn't really stepped into the fullness of themselves as adults yet. Noah has been through a lot. I mean, he's experienced a lot with going to war, losing his friend, building a house, having a direction, having a more stability in his life. Allie coming back into his life and she's now able to release her feminine storm with him because she's been very prim and proper and living this prim proper life for a while. It's back to the structure and, you know, back to this this world that has so much structure in it and now she's with Noah and she's she 
she's relaxing into her feminine now. He's stepped into his masculine and now they're coming together and they have this amazing chemistry now. So of course there's twists and turns along the way and you know Allie basically you know her mother comes to find her, Lon comes to look for her. Allie's basically her, her two lives that she's kind of torn between are kind of colliding together and she's got to make a decision. Eminem doesn't like to make decisions. She doesn't like to be let to make decisions on her own. Not saying that women are incapable of making decisions, but the feminine does not like to make decisions. The feminine likes to be guided, to be led. She wants to have somebody take control and take charge. And, and, and she doesn't like to be in that level of uncertainty. She likes to be, she likes to have somebody else take over the control and the structure for her. That's the feminine in, in all of us. It's the masculine in all of us that makes the decisions that has the direction. So they have this fight and it's really interesting because like they're doing this whole I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, which is really just building the sexual polarity. They don't really hate each other, they love each other. But it's this, it's this conflict like I think oftentimes people get into relationships. And I'm not talking about like struggle love or getting into relationships with people who you were just completely unaligned with. I'm not talking about that. I think oftentimes people want to get into relationships with people who think exactly like them or exactly like them. And that can be great for like friendships or, you know, business partnerships or things like that, roommates. If you want a sexual relationship with sexual polarity, you need a little bit of conflict. You need to be you need some heat. You don't want to actually hate each other. You always want it to be from love, but you want to be, you don't want somebody who agrees with you all the time. It's actually Jordan Peterson had a lecture that I watched where he talked about how being with somebody who agrees with you all the time would be entertaining for like maybe a month at most. But like, you don't want somebody who just agrees with everything you say all the time. Like you want that, that push and pull in a relationship. You don't necessarily want to always be fighting all the time, but you, you need that difference. It's like, you know, like the viva la difference. Like you want a masculine and a feminine and they're, they're going to be in conflict sometimes. The masculine is going to want one thing and the feminine is going to want another thing, but it's that conflict. It's that polarity that brings people together in, in sexual polarity. It's interesting because again, they have this, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. And then you know, Noah is basically like, you know, this is what we do. You know, this is what we do. We fight. And he's like, I'm not afraid to hurt your feelings because they have like a, like a 10 second rebound time or something like that. Like, like he knows that like she's in a feeling one minute, she's going to be in a next feeling the next minute. And like he says, he's not afraid to call her out because he's not afraid of her. He's not afraid of like, Ooh, let me be delicate. No, he doesn't want to hurt her. He never wants to hurt her. He loves her dearly. He always wants to protect her and keep her safe. He's also not afraid to call her out when he needs to, because that's what they do. That's their, that's their relationship. That's that, that's the masculine feminine dynamic. It's like, it's like, you know, you can call each other out when you're not in alignment. You're not in integrity. You're not aligned with yourself. Like, like you can call each other out. It's like you want a relationship where you feel comfortable being able to call the other person out on their bullshit. And, and it may cause some conflict, but there's always still love there at the end of the day. And like Noah points out, it's going to be really hard. And I think, you know, it's one of those things where he's telling her like not to take it easy. And she's like, what do you mean easy? Like I'm always going to hurt someone no matter what. And it's indicative of the fact that many times we get into relationships with somebody who is exactly like us like you know two people who are kind of both in their masculine so they both have structure and direction and they're kind of like buddies or you get two people in a relationship who are kind of uh both in their feminine energy so they're kind of both like in you know, like girlfriends or whatever being in a relationship with a masculine partner and a feminine partner and having sexual polarity it's not always easy it's not always the easy option these relationships aren't really designed to be easy they're designed to help us grow to help us become better with this person than we would be without this person. And I'm not talking about nagging, I'm not talking about controlling, I'm not talking about anything like that, but it's like, it's not always the easy option or just telling everybody what they wanna hear or, or just sort of keeping things at the status quo. Relationships can stir a lot of stuff up in us and that's not always a bad thing. Obviously if it's toxic or manipulative or something like that, like that's another situation. But I think it's really important to understand that relationships aren't necessarily gonna be easy all the time and that's what I think is the example of this. Like, he's like, yeah, I, this is going to be difficult. Like, I don't want to choose the easy option, but you know, it, it's worth it. That's what relationships are is they're, they're bringing out the best in us and they're, they're forcing us to step up into a better version of ourselves. Noah does slip into his ego a little bit in his argument where he calls it out that it's because he doesn't have as much money, which is, is his thing. Allie's never made him feel like he didn't have enough money or anything like that. Like that's definitely something that is Noah's 
Noah's ego coming out, like his limiting beliefs of not feeling good enough. It's like he's, it's all that stuff from the reason why they broke up the first time is because he felt not good enough for her and like that stuff's coming up. But like Allie's never made him feel that way and she actually gets mad at him because he brings that up because she's never actually done anything to make him feel that way. That was her family. And it's also another example of what I mentioned earlier with Noah and his like, you know, picture what your life is gonna be like. If it's with him, fine, go. I lost you once, I think I can do it again. Noah wants Allie to be happy. He wants to be with Allie, but he's willing to let her go if that is what's truly gonna make her happy. The masculine can love the feminine so fully and so completely, but if he doesn't feel like he's really what she wants, or he doesn't believe that he's enough for her, he will let her go. Not because he doesn't love her, but because the masculine doesn't necessarily attach the same way that the feminine does. He's willing to let her go if it means her happiness. It's not gonna be easy for him and it's gonna be painful for him, but he's willing to do that for her. And it's very indicative of, of the masculine. When a masculine man lets you go and says, I love you, but I'm gonna let you go, or I think I'm not good enough for you or something like that, like he usually means it. The feminine wouldn't do that. The feminine will attach to the masculine and need to feel his fullness and, and, and want to hold on, even if it's not the right thing. I mean, the feminine will stay in really toxic relationships and not saying this is one, but you know, because she doesn't want to lose love, because losing love is is the worst thing that she could possibly feel. That's why, you know, Allie's having a really hard time letting go of anything. She's like hanging on to everything because she doesn't want to lose love. She does love Lon and she loves Noah. She doesn't want to lose love. It's not that she, I mean, she knows that she can't keep them both and it's not like she's gonna try some kind of polyamory situation here, but she doesn't want to lose love. Letting go of love is so, against what is ingrained in the feminine soul. Like, it's so difficult for her. I'm not saying the feminine can't walk away from a relationship, that she can't step up and know her worth and walk away if something is really bad. She does end up being able to walk away from Lon, as difficult as it is, because she does really love him. It's not in her nature, it's not in the feminine's nature, as, well, as much as it is in the masculine's nature to be able to let someone go if, if he thinks that that's the right option at the time. And then of course there's the iconic moment where you know Noah's basically screaming at Allie, like, what do you want, what do you want? Want. like not what everybody else wants but what do you want and she just can't she can't say she can't make up her mind she's just like okay I just have to go because she the feminine doesn't want to make up her own mind I know a lot of people aren't gonna to want to hear that but the feminine and that's the feminine in all of us does not want to make up our own mind we don't we want to be led we want to like we want our masculine our chosen masculine partner when he's at his most trustable to say okay this is what you want like we want that deep down now we don't want a guy to be a jerk about it and we don't want it to be untrustable we don't want it to be not out of love or we don't want it to be out of integrity feminine doesn't like to make up our own mind like we don't like we we want to be in the midst of the storm and the chaos and we want the masculine partner to have that structure to be our structure she wants noah to be that structure and he's basically like nope I want you to do it. I want you to make up your mind and it's kind of almost like forcing her to be in the masculine in that moment in order to make a decision and she's fighting it because she can't. And of course, as the story goes on, we find out that, you know, she does end things with Lon even though she does really love him. It's just it's not the same love and she doesn't have that same same sexual polarity that she has with Noah. So she ends things with Lon and we do find out that she has a wonderful beautiful life with Noah and of course they end up in the nursing home together Allie loses her memory and as I said earlier I really like the way it ended I really felt like the ending of it just felt like a very sweet ending and I feel like a lot of movies we we see the couple when they kind of come together at the end but we don't see the happily ever after and this was very much like you find out where their life went you find out how their life ended whereas so many of the sort of like fairy tale romances it's like you you see the conclusion of when the two get together and they decide to like start a relationship or start you know getting married or something like that whereas in this movie you're actually seeing the conclusion of it like okay this is where they started and like this is where they're ending and i really i thought it was a very sweet ending it was emotional but i still thought it was very sweet so if you haven't seen this movie which i would say most people probably have but i didn't see it <laughs> in full until yesterday so 
If you haven't seen this movie, I highly recommend after you watch this video that you watch this movie. Even if you have seen the movie before, rewatch the movie, see if you can pick up on some of the things that I mentioned here. I'm actually going to put little mini film clip breakdowns of some of the scenes that I mentioned in this video on my TikTok, so you can check that out. Details are in the description box below. If you have any other thoughts on this movie or any other movie requests, let me know. Leave them in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love your suggestions. In fact, this movie was very highly requested. If you're interested in learning more about feminine communication, I have a master class on feminine communication. Details will be in the description box below, along with links to all my social media accounts. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you join me next time.